in this presentation what I want to show you is how we can install a door jam which is a part I'm indicating here into our frame so that it's plumb, the styles are plumb, the head is level and all the other components are square and parallel to each other. So this is the end product. Let's go back to the start and see what we need to do. So obviously there's our frame. First step we need to do is cut our head material to the width of the opening. Now you can measure it or just um, take it straight off the actual opening like I've done here or whatever method is best for you but we need to get that measurement. Then we can take our head material over to our work area and the first thing we need to do on here is find our center line. So pretty simple, measure in from the ends, find the center and mark the center line. Just a light mark, it's not going to be permanent. From there we then need to mark evenly onto our head our door width. So yeah, find the width of the door, halve it, measure that distance out from the center and you'll get the door width marked centrally onto the head. Now each side of the door we need to have a clearance or a margin to allow for painting, staining and just to have a little bit of uh, clearance around the door. So generally with a, a painted door and jam we'd leave 3 mil and if you're going to stain and varnish the jam and the door we'd leave about 2 mil clearance. So whatever you decide you need to allow a little clearance uh, dimension there. So the ne next step then is to actually mark in where our jam is going to um, meet our head. So the best way to do it is to get a little bit of an offcut of your jam material and even if you buy the um, standard jam packs which you can get from your local hardware you might we should be able to cut a very small offcut off off the uh, the head and um, you can use that. It won't be as long as what uh, I've got pictured here but you should be able to get yourself an offcut. So what I've done as you can see I've lined the rebated section of the style material of the offcut up with the clearance mark and then I can just mark on the back edge of that I can mark where that's going to end up and then I can square that all the way across the head material. So then up here I have to mark out the thickness of the non-rebated section. So the non-rebated section here and I can mark out the thickness of that and we then need to cut that out. So whatever means you have available we need to trench that out so this whole section here is now on the same level and the whole procedure needs to be repeated on the other side as well. And that's it, that's our head prepared ready to take our styles. So the next step then is to cut our styles to length so we'll go over to the wall. So here I've got the two styles now when we take the, cut these to length what you have to take into consideration is that once you're going to have the height of the door to consider you also have to have an allowance for your little clearance so 3mm or 2mm um, and underneath the door, which is going to be on this end, you need to have an allowance for your floor covering. So whether you're going to have tiles, whether you're going to have carpet, floating floors popular nowadays, or even vinyl, you have to have an allowance so that you actually lift the door far enough off the floor that you don't end up having to cut the door off later. So just remember that your clearance, the height of your door and an allowance for the floor covering will give you the length of your style. So once you've got your styles uh, length worked out and styles cut you can then attach the head and as you can see styles just slot into the housing joint that you prepared earlier 
and that should be glued and nailed together at a minimum if not glued and screwed personally I prefer to screw it together uh, you can use PVA glue or any of the water based uh, construction glues or if you haven't got any of them on site a bit of um, construction adhesive will do the job fine so then while we've got it on the floor we just want to check that it, the um, jam's actually square by measuring the diagonals and then while we've got it held square we can put a couple of temporary braces on it to make sure it's not going to move so a couple here to make sure the corners stay square one down the bottom here to keep the two styles parallel and the same distance apart and you'll notice with these temporary braces I've put them on the non rebated side of the jam so this way when I put them into the frame I can still place cut um, and install my door into the jam without um, without having to take the braces off so that's all ready to go we can put it up into the jam so once we get in the jam what we need to do we need to make sure first of all that our hinge style is plumb and that it's all uh, packed and secured to the to the, the stud so best way to do that obviously stand it in to the jam the top of the door the top of the head is going to uh, be pushed up against the stud anyway because that's the length we cut it and then using a straight edge and a spirit level we can make sure it's straight while we insert packers or what I prefer to do is use folding wedges so these are just two wedges now these can be cut out of timber or you can buy uh, proprietary made ones from the hardware store and the beauty about the folding wedges is they just um, can be pushed in or out to make sure that the the jam is touching the straight edge once you have them at the right um, right thickness we can then drive a nail in to hold them into place as you can see I've left the nail proud and generally I'll leave those nails proud until the, the um, architraves are in place and then I can go around and drive them home and nail everything off uh, at the end so do the jam I'll do the hinge side first with all your bracing your head should be level but just give it a quick check and then you can come across and carry out the same procedure down on what we call the lock style side of the jam once again using the folding wedges and nailing them off as you go so once you've done all that what you should have is a plumb level square and parallel door jam ready to receive a door and if the jam's done right then the fitting of the door should be a breeze